a truce in the great 21st century tussle over history, justice and restitution. And the prize has been won by Nigeria. The priceless Benin artifacts are at last returning home after standing for more than a century in the museums of Germany. The country agreed to return the artifacts to Nigeria years after they were stolen during the colonization of Africa. British troops looted thousands of artworks known as the Benin Bronzes from the Kingdom of Benin in present-day Nigeria in 1897. Following auctions, some of the bronzes ended up in museums and private collections across Europe. They hold deep cultural significance and there's been sustained international pressure to give them back. But it's not just Germany that's making the return. Scotland and France are also repatriating pillaged Benin bronzes, but hundreds of pieces are still being held in the British Museum and several museums in the US. Well, for more on the issues surrounding the Benin bronzes, I'm joined now in the studio by the editor of the Journal of African Cultural Heritage Studies, Dr. John Kelechi Uguanyi, who is also a senior lecturer in the Department of Archaeology and Tourism at the University of Nigeria. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you, Charles. On Thank the you. face of it, um, these are trophies of a stolen past, and the west is in receipt of stolen goods is it that simple and you know we're just sort of straightforward and therefore restitution should be made yeah just you know uh when we talk about the, the stolen artifacts yeah there are complex situations around them and uh let me take it from uh the idea the debate that is ongoing mm. uh, people are saying we should return them get them back to nigeria because of uh, the kind of fulfillment people will get uh, because of the the historical and cultural importance to nigeria and uh, too many other things so that's are saying yes uh, it is time to return these stolen artifacts to nigeria but the question is are we really returning it to nigeria or to the people so uh, I think we, want, we are about to make a mistake of framing colonialism the way it was when they came. And uh, uh, the way we are putting it is like uh, we are returning this to Nigeria. Of course, uh, Benin, Benin Kingdom is now in Nigeria. Mm. But uh, if you look at it from the perspective of uh, inclusion, you find out that within Benin Kingdom, the kind of colonial history that framed Benin Kingdom made it a kind of unitary. But uh, if you look at uh, some anthropological works before uh, uh, amalgamation of Nigeria, you find out that Benin was ruled, so the Oba was the political leader, the religious leader, but there are decentralized empires uh, headed by the Enugis. And these Enugis led their people within their cultural settings. And you know, this cultural consciousness was within these uh, uh, quarters, within Benin Kingdom. So if you are returning them, I, I'm sure that it, during the 18, uh, uh, it is, uh, 1897 expedition, the, the, the looting wasn't particularly uh, only from the palace. Mm. Uh, it happened <coughs> within the entire kingdom. And what, what it means is that there are some artifacts that were uh, stolen from certain quarters that are not within the palace. And if you want to talk about how heritage is uh, discussed within uh, the critical heritage disc uh, discourse, it is about attachment. So how are people attached to artifacts? Mm. That, that's a very, very interesting yeah. point. So the, the question really, to, to simplify it, because we're, we're not as, as, as smart as you are, um, is, is who do you think those Benin artifacts should be returned to? Is there an issue of rightful ownership here? I mean, that's essentially what you're saying, isn't yes, it? Yes, uh, the question of provenance, mm. the question of ownership. Uh, you know, uh, it's easy to say that these artifacts belong to Benin Kingdom. But uh, when you look at it critically, it's not just Benin Kingdom. There mm. are quarters that make up Benin Kingdom. Absolutely. So if you want to return them, you need to identify. You know, uh, this has to do with the arrogance, uh, the elite's arrogance, where those of us in the universities, those of us in uh, heritage institutions representing the nation are speaking for the nation. And we have refused, we have excluded those of them within the local public. And when we bring them into this discussion, we'll be able to identify who actually owns what. 
And Don't it's probably more relevant to them, that discussion. Exactly. Uh, you know, uh, we, might be, we might be looking at things, certain things like motifs about uh, artifacts. Mm. If you get to Benin, certain quarters might be able to identify artifacts belonging to them. And we haven't done that. We right, but, but let me ask you this, okay. though, um, so that we're clear on, on sort of, you know, we move systematically. Do you see the Benin artifacts as symbols of past injustice for which the West must make amends? Of course. Crimes were committed in the past and people have to take responsibility. But then people argue that the, the Kingdom of Benin was also a dictatorship which committed crimes against other people. Well, that's... that's so, so where do you stop? And, and you're making a very interesting point yeah, that's about a colonial, the fact that that's, that's a kind of colonial uh, framing of Africa mm. where uh, uh, they, they think that they know the best for the people and uh, the people doesn't have uh, that kind of right to say what they want and what they do not want. So we don't need to frame everybody in line with the colonial. We are talking about the colonial now, right. trying to uh, rethink what uh, colonialism brought. So if we want to rethink, then what we must do is to uh, look in inward mm. to find out how the people feel about these things. And by doing that, what, what we do is we go beyond the elitist and get down to the communities. Mm. And if we want to heal, we must start from within. We don't, we don't have to continue to look at it. So it's got to be a grassroots A grassroots thing. kind of thing where you engage the local public on how to reparate mm. what was done against so, them in the past. So is it your sense that art is being politicized here? I mean, art and history. And, and are you disconcerted about that and, and the issue of who owns culture and how we try to understand these artifacts that are vital to understanding the civilizations of the past? You know, uh, within the first decade of the 21st century, mm. uh, heritage scholars moved away from just heritage studies and started engaging critically. And uh, this is where the politics comes in. Uh, you look at people trying to say something that the public or the elites would like to hear. And that's the kind of thing that is happening in this debate. We've not, we, we don't want to engage beyond the elites. If we want to send people to Germany to negotiate, we send people from NCM women, we send people from uh, universities, we send people from the royal palaces. What about the common man on the street of Benin? What about the common man on the street of Nigeria? How are they feeling about these things? We yeah. need to know. Well, obviously, somebody has to negotiate. I mean, the, I think the first stage is to ensure that these things are brought back and and you you agree that they ought to be brought back yes. so now it's a question of where do they go and let me ask you that is there an issue about where you think they should be displayed when they return to nigeria yes uh these days people are talking about uh decolonized museums i would like to ask you Charles. How many people, how many Nigerians visit museums? Well, how many museums are there in Nigeria? So World-class museums that can actually preserve these Yeah, things. the question is the, how the people feel about things in the museums. I can remember when I was going to study in the university. I told my elder sister that I was going to study archaeology and tourism, and she was like, what? You want to go study something that has to do with paganism? Something that has to do with, uh, you know, that kind of thinking. Yes. And here is the problem, the framing of history, where people are not uh, pro uh, properly uh, uh, informed about what, what their culture is. The importance so, of that so, and the value of it. Yes. So the, the problem now is we need to return these things, but we need to return them not to national museums, but what I might call uh, cultural centers. How heritage is useful in this part of the world is the utilitarian value and not necessarily the static perfection that happens in the museum. So if you look into heritage in Nigeria and you want it to be relevant to both the elites and the local public, then we have to go in the direction of the utility of it. So how are these things still useful in Benin and how can we link that static perfection which is be, to be returned with what is ongoing as part of the cultural activities in Benin Kingdom. Right, but it has to be said though that the Benin people are great, um, have tremendous respect for their 
Obers, um, and and the 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 Ober of Benin is is from what I'm I understand that they're trying to build a museum in around his quarters so that this thing can be housed there. So the same sacredness or, or yeah. the same respect that's attributed to the Ober can also be attributed to these objects, and he would have primary responsibility of looking after them. Yeah, but uh, if you watch what is happening, there was this protest by the descendants of the Igwe, Igwe, Igwe lineage, mm. those that the, the bronze casters. They said, no, yeah, we want it returned, but our ancestors produced this, so we should have access to them, and not necessarily just in the royal palace. And this is the kind of complication that will continue to come up if we don't negotiate appropriately. Mm. So until we begin to engage the rightful people, I'm not saying that the Oba should not be engaged. Of course, he is the arrow, but there are people who should be engaged too. There are people who have right and a kind of ownership right. But I mean, th this, this, yeah, but the, the point about it is that these things are owned by the Nigerian government, which owns them on behalf of the Nigerian Commonwealth. And therefore, it is a, a historical artifact that belongs to Nigeria. Nigeria. Um, so it is the primary responsibility of the, I mean, you, you can't take an artifact like, like that and say, well, okay, let's give it to, you know, somebody because they make some claim. I mean, there have been historical transitions since that time. And yes. therefore, that has to be reflected in the way that it is looked after, isn't it? Yes, but I, I think uh, there, is, there is a way you will handle it that the Nigerian government will be involved, but you have to also carry along the local uh, community members who actually have some attachment to these artifacts. If you don't do that, what you will see is that uh, usually you know that uh, certain uh, artifacts were returned in the past. Where are they? Are they being cared for? Are they being useful in Nigeria? Well, that's so, all the more reason why it should be somewhere where people can so, say, so well, we know where it is. That is and, why and I'm, suggesting that that. I'm suggesting that a kind of cultural center should be established where you have uh, a kind of uh, in, uh, intersection between those works and right. the ongoing culture okay. in the being. I want to thank yeah. you very much indeed, John Kalechi Uguanyi, who is the editor of the Journal of African Cultural Heritage Studies and also a senior lecturer in the Department of Archaeology and Tourism at the University of Nigeria. Thank you very much. Thank indeed. you.